We know that John was commanded to write down his vision for the seven servants of the seven churches. But he was also commanded to show it unto the Lord's servants. Joseph Smith retained this wording in his prophetic restoration. What does it mean to show the vision unto the Lord's servants? To show someone a vision is more than just writing it down and letting others read it. It means to present the vision to the sight of others. The Greek word translated as shoe in the King James Version is dikai. Its primary meaning is to cause to see, expose to the eyes, or present visually. A good example of its usage in this sense is the exchange between Jesus Christ and the Pharisees on the matter of paying tribute to Caesar. Jesus asks the Pharisees to produce a coin with Caesar's image. The point of the exercise was for the Pharisees to look at the coin and the image on it. The coin was shown, that is, caused to be seen by the Pharisees. John used a form of the same root word, edikon, when speaking of the angel showing him the river of life and the descent of the holy Jerusalem from heaven. In both cases, the angel is sharing a visual experience. John was seeing both the river and city. It is, after all, a vision. The clear implication when the Lord commands John to show the vision to the servants, he is to do so visually. The sharing of the vision is to be more than words on a book. The servants are to see the vision. Yet John the Evangelist cannot literally show the vision to all the servants of Jesus Christ. There are too many of them. Besides, showing the vision, as we have documented, is within the purview of Jesus Christ and no one else. So, what does it mean that John was required to show the vision? The intent of the commandment to show the vision in this case is for John to show the vision through images. He is to signify the vision in the same manner and with the same symbols as the Savior did for him. Through the symbols, servants can, in a sense, see the vision. While the primary showing of the vision is to be through the symbols based upon the planetary archetypes, this does not exclude the possibility that any servant, given enough faith, can see the vision for him or herself. Nephi is a good example of this point. Lehi, the patriarch prophet of the soon-to-be Nephite and Lamanite nations, was shown a vision or dream, which he shared with his family. Nephi was not satisfied with hearing the account of his father. He wanted to see the vision for himself. Through his faith, Nephi received the vision first from the Holy Spirit and then from the angel, Jesus Christ.
Nephi was shown the vision because of his faith in Jesus Christ. Any servant with sufficient faith, the faith of Nephi, can qualify to see the vision for him or herself. The Apostle John was commanded to show the vision to the servants of Jesus Christ. The servants, in turn, were to see the vision through its visual symbols based upon the planetary archetypes. But first, they had to hear the words of the prophecy. In the early Christian church, it was commonplace that letters from the leadership of the church be read during worship services on the Lord's Day. Eusebius, a bishop of Caesarea and considered the father of church history, wrote that it was custom to read epistles in the church, citing the example of Clement's epistle to the Corinthians. John's revelation was intended and constructed with this practice in mind. We know from Paul's epistle to the Colossians that he expected it to be read publicly to the churches of the Colossians and the Laodiceans. Likewise, his letter to the Laodiceans was to be read to the Colossians. The intent of all Paul's epistles and those of the other apostles was didactic. They all were meant to be read to the congregations for their instruction and edification. This is what differentiates an epistle from an ordinary letter. Like the epistles of Paul, the revelation of John was to be read by one, he, and heard by the members of the congregation, they. Chapters 2 and 3 of John's Apocalypse detail seven epistles to the seven angels of the seven churches. The pattern is formulaic. John writes the epistle, the angel reads it to the church, and the members of the church are commanded to hear the message. In our dispensation, Joseph Smith followed the same pattern. When he could not physically be present to give instruction to the membership of the church, he wrote a letter with instructions that were meant to be read to the members or the leadership depending upon circumstance. The blessing was dependent upon more than just reading and hearing the prophecy of John. The things in the Revelation were to be kept or obeyed. The Apocalypse is more than a revelation, it is a set of commandments and warnings. The Greek word translated keep is tereo and means to keep, guard, or observe. Translations of this word are variously keep, obey, heed, and lay to heart. The revelation is not just for our intellectual stimulation. It is meant to change our lives. This blessing is the first commandment in the revelation. That is, hear and obey the revelation itself. 